on the computer. So you'll probably see a thing just letting you know that I'm actually recording it. Uh, okay. And um, this will go up, uh, like the whole stream will go up live tomorrow on YouTube. And then about a week later, it'll come out on iTunes for the Awesome. Podcast. Sweet. Yeah. Well, uh, I really appreciate you doing this, Justin. I, this is this has been really cool for me to um, to be able to interview a lot of uh, my guitar heroes and guys that I really appreciate and, and kind of love what they do. And I, and and uh, I'm, I'm glad that uh, we were able to get you to agree to uh, to do this with me. So thank you for your time. And you know, dude, thank you, man. It's, it's awesome. Thanks for thinking of me, man. I yeah. saw the one you did with uh, Michael Thompson. And it was awesome dude so this yeah. is this stuff's really cool yeah he really uh, he really got into it about all the celine dion the mutt lang stuff it's really yeah. really cool yeah he's he's got uh he's got some stories you know every time i talk to him he's got you know all these stories from from way back when and, and you know going overseas and getting paid with cash and stuff like that. oh yeah <laughs> it's crazy man <laughs> yeah Having to come back with like a money vest. This is like before September 11th. So you <laughs> a money vest. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that's killer. Yeah. So you know, maybe you'll have some. Maybe you'll have some, have a money vest story. If not now. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. This looks like we're gonna be traveling anytime soon, huh? Yeah. Yeah. It, it looks that way, doesn't it? Well, yeah. the the thing the thing that I kind of want to you know to kind of give you a scope of of the the conversation topics i really want to talk about sort of your evolution not only as a player but also sort of the gear from sort of you know justin derrico v1 <laughs> to, to sure. where you are now kind of how your tastes have evolved and what stayed the same um i want to talk about you know kind of some of the pivotal moments in your career and kind of what you what you saw as sort of being the 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 areas where where it really was sort of a defining moment that allowed you to sort of catapult yourself in in, in into uh, new and better gigs and um and then maybe also we could talk some about how you think what do you think the future is going to look like for for you know sidemen and, and musicians like you and what do you think maybe some of the the pivots and alternatives could be for for people to explore sure uh, as you know things sort of uh take some time to you know get back to normal and and you know we're filling arenas again with you know tens of thousands of people yeah that'll be nice <laughs> once we get back to that point <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah. well, i noticed um you know I, um some of the guys that work for me were over at uh you know uh the uh the rehearsal space um, that you've been to, uh -huh. and, uh, they said that guys were just uh, getting ready, loading on uh, all this like uh, you know streaming stuff for the full size stages, so that you know bands were going to be coming in there and doing some big streams. I guess like Nine Inch Nails stuff was out there, and um, you know, so I guess some of these bands are are trying to figure out ways where they can use the rehearsal facilities, you know, the the arena size stages minus the the audience and figure out ways to do their whole yeah, show. Yeah, I mean, it seems like that's kind of, you know, I've heard of some people like that. I've heard of people doing that and, and trying to do that. And I guess the, the weird thing is, is like, how do you, you know, I get, how do they monetize it? You know what I mean? So like, um, like how do they, you know, like you, you, you do a concert and they sell tickets and they sell merch and this and that. It's like, I guess, do people buy it? A virtual ticket and tap into the to the, to the room to, to watch it or or is it just streaming is it free is it you know like like everything is you know with with you know apple music and and spotify and all that sort of thing so it's it's kind of a weird um yeah it's such a strange time you know like it's already a strange enough time with 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 all the streaming stuff and how all that's that sort of stuff content works you know and in, in for musicians to make money and, and artists and stuff like that and because they don't pay a lot of royalties with the, with the streaming stuff and um so that's already confusing enough to, to sort of figure out and then and then yeah now 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 you have the you know the one thing that people were still able to, to you know to make some some serious money off of with the touring and stuff is on at a hold you know 
in a holding pattern. So it's it's such a it's such a weird time, man. I don't know what the hell to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I wonder whether. Uh, yeah, I wonder too what it's going to look like. I, I guess that even if you if you you wouldn't be doing a stream like let's say for example you you said to all of the you know, the the ticket purchasers of your various shows in different parts of the country would you put on a different show for Oklahoma City for uh St. Louis for Chicago would these these be like all different or you know cuz if they like you could show up every day and do it like a tour yeah. <laughs> and like just change the set list every day right i don't know i mean certainly there, there's a huge amount of overhead in in go, playing at an arena like i think sure just to turn the lights on at, at at madison square garden it's it's somewhere in the hundred thousands you know well madison square garden is kind of a different um uh, animal altogether just because of the the unions in new york are so are so like strict and uh you know, so I think, but yeah, it is expensive. It's expensive to tour, but um, I think, you know, when, when the tour is really successful, I, I mean, it's the, the cost, you know, of, of doing the tour, it's, it's probably taken care of, you know, depending on how big the tour is within the first week or month of, of the tour. And then the rest is all, you know, so if you're out for a year and a half and it's just pure profit from then on, I mean, it's, it's um it's pretty lucrative um yeah. for for certain artists but um yeah it's scary man because you know the artists got to make money so we you know so we can make money too you know so it's like it's uh you know it's it's uh it's scary out there you know and it's not just our industry every, every industry right now it's 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 a mess because of the corona thing it's just such yeah. a how many how many artists or have you heard of guitar players now because in the old days some of these guys would be on retainers you know you, mm -hmm. you side man you get paid whether you were on the road or not you know so if billy joel decided to take a year off you know his guitar player was still getting paid is that, <laughs> is that, is that no longer like a thing anymore is it very rare i it's pretty rare i mean you know like i can under like you know it, it, it'll happen when say you you're in between legs of a tour you know and it's like you got a month off or maybe two months off or maybe five months off but you're gonna go back out then you know that that makes sense but if you're gonna be off for the next year two years whatever it is then i i, I don't i don't really see that happening although i know a lot of the 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 you know nashville acts you know that they they, they kind of they they do it that way and and um um i guess it's it's more common i think in nashville than it is uh on our side of the world <laughs> our country sorry yeah um but it's not completely unheard of but yeah i think it's a lot i think it's it's definitely more rare these days because the the revenue for the artists isn't quite like it was in in the in back in the 80s you know like we're you know we're they were just crushing it with, you know, record sales, touring, merch. I mean, like, you know, it, it was just, the money was, was, was crazy, you know, and now with the streaming stuff, you take a big piece of the pie out, you know, so it, they don't have, you know, the money to, to really, to do that so much anymore. Do you think that the, that the streaming stuff is, is going to have to evolve in terms of, how it includes musicians in that because it seems like the record labels are still making quite a bit of money but they're but they're they're in cahoots with with spotify and sure. stuff like that so you know they, yeah i mean i think they're doing better than they ever have since the streaming stuff because when the when the itunes store and the downloading stuff came out they were kind of behind the ball and then when the streaming stuff came out, I think they, they caught on and, and, and they've, they've, you know, they've gotten back to, you know, I think they're doing better than they have in years in the, uh, in the past. But, you know, I don't really know, man. I, I, the, that stuff, it's so, such a foggy gray area. And I'm, I'm no expert with how all that stuff really works. But, you know, it is, it's kind of, it is kind of something's definitely going to have to change. And maybe it's, maybe is it our thinking that has to change? You know, the way we see it, you know, maybe now it's more of a, a numbers game, you know, 
it's, you know, it's like, I need to have 10 kajillion streams to make $500. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, um, you know, but so I, I need to put more and more content, more content, more content, more content out there to, to, in order to make ends meet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, it's, it's, there's parts of it that are great. It's nice to be able to just flick on Spotify and go, oh, I want to listen to, you know, Hank Williams, or I want to listen to, you know, Bill Withers or whatever that, that, you know, and, and, and all their records will come up and all their stuff. And it's just it, right at your fingertips. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, the shitty part about it is, is, you know, the, the, the royalty thing and, you know, but you know, yeah. You know, the, I don't really see, uh, I don't see it changing anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's really tricky, you know, but I, I think also, you know, there's, I think now that more, you know, there's a lot of consumers of music that have never, you know, never went to a... a they've never paid for music. So or, it's, yeah, it's, they've it's, never been to a Sam Goody, you know, or, or whatever, and, uh, you know, had to you know, put on the headphones uh, and listen to the CD to see if <laughs> there was enough songs that you liked on there that was worth you buying it, you know. And uh, isn't that crazy? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's like, do you ever, um, do you ever so that's the thing. So I don't think that, I don't think it, like, we will have to evolve. I think more so than, you know, it's, it's already happened. It's, and it's, and it's the, you know, the wheels are in motion and until the next, you know, media change of whatever that is you know how to how to get music out there is you know i think this is it for now you know um but it's all good i mean look i can't complain i i've 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 been doing really well with with um you know with with pink and the voice and stuff like that it's just been i've been especially through this corona thing you know we just did the this last season of the voice uh remotely so i was in my studio at home right and where and what's that right where you're sitting there. right where i'm sitting yeah and um um uh, yeah and and uh you know we we did the whole thing i mean i was in here 12 14 hours a day just busting out songs and Man. it was crazy because we had to so we had to do more songs than we needed to do because we didn't know who was going home so we had to prepare as if everybody was getting through, um, you know, and it was, it was kind of a crazy learning curve because, you know, like we weren't in a room together. Normally the band gets in a room together and, and sorry, that's what it's called me. Normally our band gets in a room together and, and, um, you know, we're, we're hashing things out, you know, Dave, the other guitar player, he'll play something I'll react to it or vice versa or Paul or whoever, you know, we'll, you know, we'll, we just sort of vibe off each other to, to come up with these flips. And in this instance, it was kind of, you know, um, the first, you know, week or so we were really figuring it out. By the second week, we kind of had a bit of a, a plan and it was like, okay, let's, instead of just cutting to the click or, or the cut, you know, the, the track, um, the original track, let's wait, let's wait, let's get keys, and and drums at least so we know you know because there could be some questionable chord changes or how people are, are interpreting things and things like that so we let paul sort of lay down at least the you know we know these are the right chords and the right rhythms and 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 the drums were there so we had a groove to cut to and then we would we would cut to that and as i would go through i would send my parts um to the other guitar player just so he can have an idea and he would vice versa do the same just so we could kind of, you know, so we're not playing the same exact things. We're staying out of each other's way and stuff. And it was funny because a lot of times I would send him stuff or he'd send me stuff or maybe we'd already be done with our parts and we just put them together and they just kind of magically worked, <laughs> which is great. You know, uh, um, I love playing. I, I don't know if you know Dave Barry, but he's an amazing yeah. guitar player. And, and yeah. uh, uh, we, we have a really, really good time playing together we 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 uh, gel really well i think so on on that stuff how does how does it work with the contestants do they give them uh the same setup i was i was asking tim stewart about this because he was sort of doing the same thing that you were doing sure american idol 
and uh, and I asked him he wasn't really sure how the contestants were were re recording themselves like were they going into a recording studio and recording uh, individually or do they record from home or do you know have any sense of how that works I think they were recording from home um, I think the show I most of these most of these kids like you know they used logic and pro tools okay. um, and they're already sort of somewhat adequate on it you know um, but um, I think the show for the people that maybe were, you know, that wasn't their skill set. I think the show supplied them with with stuff and and you know walked walked them through it. Yeah. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but um, but I'm I, I I'm I, I'm about ninety five percent sure they all did it themselves from home. <laughs> I you know? would be a huge advantage if you had any sort of engineering experience or you had a nice uh, sort of group of microphones. You know, you could you could really sure get away with their, you know, I mean, I'm assuming that they're sending them a bounce track so they know how to. Well, you know, they, they sent like, I like, like for, for me, I would do everything, you know, um, like a, a lot of the stuff when anytime I'd use like delays or reverbs like that, I was using plugins, you know, so I could, you know, I could, if I had to go back and fix something or edit something or whatever, yeah. you know, or, the, you know, uh, or if the, like the arrangement changed and I had to maybe punch something out, I could, I could do that without. Yeah. You know, Printed to the track. Exactly. And so I would always send our, uh, when I was sending it to our pro tools guy or our, you know, who's, who would send it to the mixers, I would send them dry and wet so they could, they could decide how, how they wanted to treat it. Unless it was something really specific, like an edge kind of a thing or, yeah. you know, um, that way they could kind of mix it however, however they wanted, you yeah. know? Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I mean, I think with them, they probably, um, you know, they, they probably, um, I was just making sure it was, it was recording. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they, they, they probably just send, you know, sing it down and, and send them a drive, you know, wave file and, and let them mix it, I guess. I don't, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but yeah, it was really interesting though. Like, it's like our MD would have a zoom meeting with, with the, with them and then they'd say okay we want to do it in this key and you know i i want to give it this kind of a, a vibe or whatever you know and and then and then that was kind of our notes and and as soon as we get the drums and piano you know off we went and if we needed to change or or rethink it or or whatever you know we could we could do it but it was it was a lot man it was like i think we we ended up recording like 90 songs in like you know, four weeks. <laughs> was it more work than you would typically do if you were doing that show in person? Um, a little bit because we had to, uh, we had to do all the songs for the people. Like, like normally we would have, because we were a week ahead because they had to, you know, edit things and, and do the whole thing. So, so we had to do all the songs for the people whether they were staying or not. So there's extra songs we, we had to do that we wouldn't have done because normally we would have started that process after they've gone home. It's like, okay, so now we have these eight people left. Uh, you know, we went from, you know, 16 to eight people or whatever. And so now we'll start working on those songs where in this instance, we, we, we would do all 16 of those songs. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I think it's a cool, it's a cool thing though that they were able to pivot and make that work. Oh, it's you know? the greatest dude. I mean, Cause, cause we had been off for like, we, 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 we did some stuff in January and we'd been off. We were on like a, you know, a three month break and we were supposed to go come back when we, when we did, but it was like really uncertain. And we were just kind of like, you know, speaking of retainer, we're not on retainer. You know, when we work, we get paid when we work. So we, we you know, no, none of us were, were working for those few months. So it was like, shit, man, I hope this thing goes through and, and, and thank God it did. But, um, the next part of the show is going to be interesting because I don't see how we can do uh, the blind auditions remotely. I think we all have to be there because I mean, you need over a hundred people j just, just to fill the teams. You know what I mean? I wonder if they're going to maybe have you guys play to like, you know, like almost like a karaoke style where you guys record like a set number of tracks and then the singers have to use the, you know, something from that group of songs. I mean, you could do that, but I think, 
I think now things are slowly starting to open up and, 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 and all that stuff. So I want to think on the positive side and say, hopefully we'll start the whole process. We would have, we would have started, um, two weeks ago. Yeah. Like we would have, or maybe a week ago, like we would have finished the voice last season and then we would have had a week off and we would have started the pro the, the blind audition, at least for the band, you know, like, cause usually we have like two weeks, to learn all the songs and then we bring the contestants in and we work with them and then we go to stage yeah. and then we, we film it. What's um, your process though on learning that many songs? Like what does that look like? You know, do you have to be able to read music to do that? Or like what's the, what's the... Um, you don't have to be able to read. Uh, the first couple of seasons of the show, I didn't, uh, we didn't have any charts. Um, or at least, you know, we would, if anything, we'd make our own and I, you know, I've never been the best reader. This show has made me a hell of a lot better of a reader. Um, but uh, the first couple of seasons, I memorized everything. And, and dude, it was like, <laughs> I've etched out childhood memories, man, from that shit. Because it was so much material. And it was just too much. And, and, and then also trying to communicate without charts within the band, it's like, oh, you know, when we get to the B section or the pre-course, or the, well, what do you call in the B section? What do you call in the pre-course? You know what I mean? Like the way we would interpret things, yeah. you know, might be slightly different. I mean, most things were obvious, but there might be a song, some songs here and there where it's like, well, what is that part really? <laughs> post the hook, this post hook, this hat, whatever the hell it is. Yeah. So at least with the charts now, it's like, all right, when you get to letter B, uh, take out the first two bars, go to bar 57, make that an A minor seven, go to bar, you know what I mean? Like we can go because right. the bars are numbered and there's, mm -hmm. you know, the sections are letters. Right. So it's, so when we're mo working at the speed of light, which we do, it's, it's super helpful. Yeah. Um, and it's a lot more efficient, you know, but, um, but no, like the process is when we're doing the blinds. Uh, well, let me back up first. So, so this 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 bit we just did since we were at home and i had you know you know time to time and, and and i didn't have to like learn it learn it as if i was going out on stage to perform it i could record it and just sort of forget it so for that i didn't really use the charts i just listened to the tracks and 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 uh, learned the parts or created whatever parts that needed to be created and and that was that was i, I looked at some charts but for the most part it was just i just listened and, and 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 uh and did it that way which i think is better um and and you know um sometimes when you read something it, and you're learning it versus hearing it and learning it you, you might interpret it a little differently you know maybe feel wise, whatever, you know, or you can tell where they played it on the neck, you know, even, but anyway, so when we go to do the blinds, it's, uh, you know, we usually, we're like 14 to 16 songs a day. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, I'm, I'm the only, the only guitar player. Uh, so Dave doesn't come in until the live rounds. And so any parts that I can't cover, cause we do everything to a click, mm -hmm. uh, mostly. Um, but any parts that I can't cover live, like say an acoustic part or, you know, whatever it is, I, I have to uh, record it and put it in the box. Mm -hmm. So typically I'll, I'll learn those 15 songs and I'll go through what I gotta go through and I'll record all that stuff that night. and when I come into rehearsal, I'm kind of pretty much, I mean, I sort of know it, but I'm pretty much learning my part, what I'm going to play because I've recorded all, I spent all my time recording all the other parts, but, um, but it helps me, you know, doing all that it helps me learn the songs and stuff. But um, yeah, it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of work. And then now that now though, we've, we've been doing it for so long, we get some repeat songs. So, so it, say it's like 16 songs a night, maybe eight of them are new songs and eight of them are, are songs we've played. Maybe we haven't played them for years, but you know, my, it's kind of sometimes like learning it all over again. Cause I can't remember shit anymore uh, because of the first. Of seasons. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah. Um, you'd think it'd help your memory, but it, it certainly, it certainly destroyed mine. Um, but, 
but uh yeah it's cool though man it's 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 a lot of fun like I, it's made me a way better player man i'm learning some really cool stuff and um playing stuff that i some sh shit that I'd, i probably never would have even thought of playing you know um but was there a song that uh you got turned on to that either you didn't know about or you didn't like through this process that you're like, Oh man, that song is really great. Or, you know. Oh yeah. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I can't really think of any, but there's, there's certainly been a ton where I've been like, Oh my God, this song's be shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then we make it great, you know, with the singer sings it great, you know, may, you know, but that's the thing. Like it may not be my favorite song, but I gotta go out, I gotta go out there and play it like it's my favorite song. Because hey, my job is to make the artist shine, you know, so they can do their best and be their best. So, you know, um, so it doesn't matter. I, I love, I like, I just love playing. So yeah. like, even if I don't like the song, I'm still having a good time, you know what I mean? Um, but then, yeah, then there, there has some been some cool, um, what was one? Uh, yeah, there was a Prince song. Oh, it was, it was Diamonds and Pearls we did. And I never, I knew the song, but I never played it. And I never realized how jacked up some of the, you know, some of the, 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 the you know, the feel and, and you know, how, how weird, how weird it was to play. Yeah. When you listen to it, it's not, it's, it's sounds very fluid and natural. But when you try to play it, it's like, oh, wait, you know, is that, wait, what's happening there? You know, but, um. <laughs> I don't know. It just made me listen to that song in a different way. And I just, uh, um, I don't now because of that, it's, it's one of my favorite songs, you know, what's the most, the most played song you've done in your tenure at, at the voice, like the one that it, it inevitably is going to be there every season. Oh God. There's a few of them. I feel like bring it on home to me comes back every freaking season, <laughs> um, which is a great song, but still it's like, we, I feel like we do that every single season. Um, there's a few songs, damn it. I wish I could think of them, man. Maybe it'll come to me. But there's a few songs that will come through, that keep kind of coming through. And Paul, will, will our MD will be like, all right, can we retire this song? Like, can we, can we just, no more, you know? Um, <laughs> it's like, um, I can't think of any of the songs off the top of my head, but there are a handful of songs that come through and we're just like, oh, not this song again. <laughs> so let's let's rewind a little bit and, and talk about you know you're from virginia yep you came out to la to go to mi is that is that correct yep yeah that's about yeah and so you did the few years at mi i don't know actually i was only i was only at mi for like six months <laughs> so six months at mi and then did you have a gig right away or like i did what? Yeah, so what was like, what was the gig that you got straight out of MI? Straight out of MI, I got the gig with uh, the band The Calling. Oh, yeah. Um, and so I, uh, I auditioned. Um, what year was this, by the way? Early 2000s? Early 2000s. It was like 2000 and... Shit. I got to Let's see. What does it say? It was like 2004? I want to say 2003, 2004. Okay. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, so I, I had to look, I've got this award from MI when I went there and I had to look at the award because it says the year on it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so yeah, I, um, I auditioned for it. I was, I was hanging out with my, my friend Dory, Dory Lobel and, He's actually the guy who who subs for me when I when I go do you know tour with Pink. He comes on the on the voice and does does stuff for me. And mm -hmm. anyways, he's one of my best friends and great guitar player. And he he um we were hanging out and we were just playing some guitars. And um this guy Barry Squire, who's the dude um uh, who would hire or he would bring in his musicians to audition for, you know bands or record labels be like, hey, Barry, I need a drummer, a bass player, a guitar player, and a sorcerer. Yeah. And, and he'd be like, yeah, he, no problem. <laughs> and so, and so um, you know, so basically uh, he called Dory and Dory was like, hey man, I'm sitting here with my buddy, Justin. He's an awesome guitar player. He should, you know, he should definitely come too. Uh, 
And so I went and I got the gig. Thank you, Dory. <laughs> you know? And so anyways, um, so I got that gig and we toured for, I guess, about a year. And, uh, you know, it was a world tour and it was amazing. Um, you know, we were, it was a group of guys and, and our tour manager was probably the oldest guy in charge. And he was like 28 and we were all like, you know, I think I was 21. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was you know it was like uh 21 yeah 21 22 something like that and yeah it was um you know it, it was a lot of fun we had a lot of fun yeah i remember they had a couple of uh they had a couple of hits back then mm -hmm. the uh yeah where, wherever you'll go yeah uh, yeah yeah <laughs> Or whatever the hell it was. <laughs> yeah. You have a song yes. for that one? They give you they give you a face melter in the <laughs> Oh god, not on that song. Uh but yeah, you know, there was a there was a cool there was that was that was a funny thing, right? Cause so that gig, um it was Alex the singer and Aaron the guitar player, and they were the principals. Like they were the they were um, you know, it was their band. Right. And so the rest of the band, we were all, you know, hired musicians. Right. And um, so Aaron, you know, he was like the writer and, the, you know, the kind of the brains behind the whole thing. And Alex was the, you know, the face and the voice, if you mm -hmm. will, you know, and um, and it's great because actually Aaron, Aaron's still one of my, my greatest friends. Um, love that guy. Uh, but anyways, Aaron didn't like traveling and he didn't like touring. And so we got, I don't know, maybe a week or so into the, into the tour. And Aaron's like, man, I'm not, I, I can't do this. I don't want to, I'm done touring. And he's like, you guys go out there, you guys go tour, but I'm staying home. I can't do this. You know? And so, and Aaron was like the lead guitar player, you know, cause it's, it's his thing. And so I, you know, so then, I switched into Aaron's spot and the guy who was playing keyboards also played guitar. So he switched over to my spot. Um, and then, um, and he's just sort of kind of still double on keys, but you know, so, but, uh, so, so then I started getting, you know, some moments to, to actually do some ripping and, 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 uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, man. We, we, it was a good band actually. It was a really, really good band. Yeah. And he also had like a, didn't he sing on a Santana song at one point? Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, we played it a couple times. Uh, what the hell is that song called? You gotta, you gotta play, uh, was it Why Don't You and I or something like that? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It was the one that Nickelback had written. The guy from Yeah, the yeah. And yeah, and I had to play all the, you know, the Santana licks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he, he loves those the, yeah what's that what is great man i mean you, like right away you know it's him yeah um but yeah we yeah it was it was cool man um i you know that gig was crazy it was a huge education for me because i got to tour the world like i had never been out of the country I, I had to go get a passport um you know we went to uh you know all over europe and japan and brazil uh, and it was just, it was incredible. You know, I'd never been, and, and it was just like, holy shit, you know, and, and I grew so much because of, you know, the traveling, you know, it just opens your eyes and you see different things. You try different food. It's right. It's, you know, it's really cool. So what was your rig when you were going to MI? So when I was going to MI, I mean, I wouldn't really say I had a rig when I was going, it would be like those little practice amps those little tiny shitty fender practice amps they had at, at mi <laughs> the, the rumble uh, the fender rumble 25 or whatever whatever yeah actually they're actually weren't bad you know you could pull a decent sound out of them but um um yeah it was funny man um no i i i kind of had a rig um I, I had a bunch of gear but i was still kind of trying to figure it out i mean i think at the time i had like a dual rectifier mm. and i and i didn't use it i i I used it for a while, but I would never, I mean, it was always a little too kind of medley for me, you know, and, um, 
I ended up getting rid of that one. I mean, it's a good amp, but I ended up getting rid of it. Um, and I had a, a Fender Twin, and it was just louder and heavier than like anything in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so like gigging with that thing was like, it was a nightmare, especially in LA. Um, so I really, I really didn't have, you know, I had pedal wise, I had, you know, I think I had like a tech 21 distortion pedal and like a, like a super overdrive distortion pedal. Yeah. And I had that the green line six delay. EL4. Yeah. Great pedal. Awesome yeah. pedal. Yeah. And, um, you know, I probably had, most of the stuff I had was like boss stuff. You know, I had like a DD5. Yeah. Uh, as well. And a D, you know, and, um, uh, I, I had some chorus pedal. Actually, it wasn't my favorite, like the super ensemble or something. Super, yeah. No, it was a super chorus, I think. Yeah. Which is okay, you know. Um, but I think then I was kind of still trying to figure out sounds. Like I mostly, up until then, you know, I played in a band before I went to MI. I had this, my, my, my band, which was a band called Majacamo, and, and, and we were, it was a good band, uh, like total pop sort of jam band, kind of like Dave Matthews. Um, and, but we were a little edgier, I think. We would get, we kind of didn't know what the hell we were, because like, you know, we might play a Latin song, and then we'd be playing like some like freaking rocking, like, you know. You know that kind of shit, you know, and 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 and, um, but it was great because I got to really burn, and that's where I really learned how to play. We did a ton of gigs, and a lot of touring in a van, um, you know. So it was it was really cool. And back then, my rig was it was that Mesa Boogie, and it was pretty much just that. And I think I had a Lexicon um, rack unit for delay, and that was it. It was. Um, not the really awesome one from the 80s. I think it was like the MPX1 or? It might have been the MPX1, yeah. And which is cool. And and so I had that and it was in the effects loop and that was all I had. Yeah. Um, and a wah pedal, you know. Um, and then... The Mesa Boogie foot switches on those early rectifiers was like a pedal board in and out. Oh, yeah. Well, that was it. I had, so I had, that's right. It's coming back to me. So I had that. And then I had a wah. What else did I have on that fucking thing? I had a couple things. And I had the MPX1. That was my delays and reverbs or whatever. And, and I had a talk box, a Heil talk box. Nice. And that was, that was pretty much my rig. I might have had a tube screamer in and out of the rig, but I, I tend to always use like the amps distortion, you yeah. know, for, for the lead stuff, for the heavy stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, so that was kind of my rig all, you know, through then and through MI, I guess. But I wasn't gigging a whole lot when I was at MI. I was just there going to school and kind of learning. And, you know, I would play at school. Um, and, you know, I was just kind of, if I had a, a, like an audition or something, I'd, you know, learn the songs, figure out what the sounds would be, and just kind of throw together something and get right. it as close as I possibly could. What about um, at the calling gig? So the calling thing is when I started kind of um, putting the board together. You know, I had that green delay pedal, and I had that pur was it the purple or blue uh, line six, like uh, the um, I think it was the uh, I think it was the blue one. The, the Damn it, I can't remember what it was. The, the line six blue one? Yeah. The the modulate was it that? Yeah, the that's right. That, that's right. It was the modulation one. So yeah, I had the MM4. The MM4. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's great, great pedals actually. I, I miss those. So I had they're just big as shit, but um It's not much bigger than like a timeline though. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Um so so I had those guys. And then I had a wah, and I had a volume pedal, and I had my S, uh, SD1, or was that right? The Super Overdrive, Fall yeah. Super Overdrive. And I think I had an OD3. Um, then I, then probably a 
TU2 tuner, and I, that might have been that might have been it um, for that gig. Because um, I mean, that kind of covered everything for the most part. Because um, most most of the stuff on that was either clean or dirty, and you know, uh, and it was, and it might have been, you know, with the with the modulation thing, there might have been like a thing where I may have hit something that was like. Ch -ch 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 you know what I mean? Like, like, right, like a cool little like a effecty. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like uh, but you know, I, like I'd step on it like twice in, you know, the yeah. whole night, you know what I mean? Um, no, no rack yet. No rack. No, 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 no. The rack thing didn't happen until, um, probably 2011. Yeah. The rack thing. Yeah, it was 2011, I think, when I when I switched over to the rack, because that and that was when I had started doing the voice. I was sort of, it, like, Pink had finished a tour. We started the voice. We did a season. It might have been season two or three that I went to the rack thing. Yeah. Uh, um, because my uh, my rig, my pedal board was just getting out of control. Yeah. So then, so okay, so then. I had the the calling rig, right? Right. And then and then you know I did I did some gigs with Robin Thicke, and the, the rig pretty much stayed the same. I think I with that one the only difference was I used my twin uh, with the, with with the calling. I used that's when I got turned on to Bogner. Okay. So, so that was important though. So I had the Shiva, and which is still my main amp, the same one from then. Um, it's still it's still the same one. It's the old the original ones. Um, <coughs> with the silver chassis mm -hmm. um and so then so that was it and i had a couple yamaha guitars and then i had a gibson 336 actually i have that guitar you want to see it yeah smaller body version yeah hang on like, i'll grab it. it was the first guitar gibson ever gave me okay hang on i'll get it grab it real fast There it is. Sorry, man. Do you see the phone's back on? Okay. So, so this was this was the first guitar, and and it was actually, um, I believe Gibson gave it to me as a loner. We happened to be in New York with the calling, doing some TV stuff, and we went to. I think it was like the hit factory or something is where the gibson place was mm -hmm. and 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 anyways um they, they gave this to me as a loner and i just fell in love with it and i ended up using it for the rest of the for the rest of the tour and then i don't think they ever asked for it back so i was like all right well i guess it's mine now <laughs> watch they'll call me next next week They're like hey man i've been <laughs> looking for that guitar <laughs> Like, uh, sorry, man, it's been like 17 years, bro. <laughs> um, it's a cool guitar. I might have a little, uh, but so, so what I've got going on here is I've got, I've got my Friedman. And we can get in, I can show you my rig in a little while and, and uh, I'll get into the whole thing, but I'm on my Friedman and I've got your clean boost on the Vertex clean boost and I've got the steel string on and, um, and uh, some delay. Nice. <laughs> That clean boost is killer, by the way. I used it a shit ton on this um, this last run with the voice as well as the steel string. But um, I just, it just, it's nice. It's like, it, it, it just gives you a little bit more volume and it doesn't really change your sound at all, but it just kind of gives you, I mean, I feel like it gives you maybe a smidge of some extra gain, mm -hmm. but it just kind of, oh, it just kind of opens it up a little bit, makes it a little bit bigger, you know? Yeah. So, 
after the calling, you know, you had you had your pedal board that you put together. What was sort of the the next gig that that seeded for you after the calling? So after the calling, it was like, oh no, the band broke up, and it was like, oh, now what? Oh, like it was really sad because we really had a good time. It was a good group of guys. It was a good band, and it was an amazing experience. Um, so the band broke up, and that was it. And so we were, uh, you know. Oh, fuck, what do, I got, what do I do now? And so then kind of back to the auditioning game and um, this girl, Bonnie McKee, who's a, she's like a songwriter. Um, you know, she's written some hit songs with Katy Perry and I'm sure with tons of others. And Bonnie's awesome, great singer, great writer. And she was doing her solo artist career thing and, and um, so I toured with her for like a month. We did like a club tour. Mm -hmm. um, and then that ended. And um, and then I started playing with this girl, Vanessa Brown. And it was more promo stuff. She's like an English R&B artist. Mm -hmm. Awesome singer. Sweetheart. And um, so then I think Robin Thicke saw, saw our band with Vanessa. And he basically hired the whole band. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, then I was with Robin for, for, for quite a while. What year um, did you say this was when you got connected with Robin Thicke? Robin was probably 2005. Okay. Cause you, he, you have a credit on his, his evolution of Robin Thicke. Yeah. Yeah. So the funny thing is with that, um, that record, I feel like the calling thing was like 2003, man. And then 2004, because then I did the Bonnie stuff and then the Vanessa stuff. And then I was with Robin for about a year because mm -hmm. I started playing with Pink in 2006. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to, it's, I'm a little foggy because it was a long time ago, but nonetheless. Yeah. So when I started with Robin, the, his, that record was done. Yeah. Right. I don't know if he had a title for it. I don't know if, um, but the record was, was done and we, we started rehearsing with him and you know and we were rehearsing at his house and, and Robin's like a real creative songwriter guy and you know he'd kind of like you know he'd come sing with us and he might be putting around the house and then like he'd hear something and be like do that again you know and I'd be like or whatever you know whatever it was and, and then he'd go, go to that chord oh yeah that, that's that's awesome you know and and um not, not saying that any of what i just played was that but he would he would get inspired <laughs> and and so then we ended up writing like at least uh, you know half that record we we ended up you know either redoing some of the songs that were already there or we wrote we wrote a bunch of songs with them and um and recorded them and it was it was really cool man like i wasn't like we were expecting to learn the record play the record tour the record Right. We ended up learning the record, recreating the record and writing some of the record, you know, and then, and then touring some of it as well. Yeah. Um, he had some big hits on that one that uh, lost without you and was, was yeah. that, that one of the ones that you guys redid or was no, that... no, that one was done. That one's done. I think he did that with Sean Hurley, the bass player. Uh, Sean played the acoustic guitar on it. Probably. Sean's a really talented dude. So, I mean, yeah, he did that. Whatever it was, I can't remember. Now, been, uh, if you were, then you had to you had to break out the nylon string or what? Yeah, well, that went live. I did the uh, I did it all on my tailor, okay. and you know, and I can't remember the licks. Um, whatever they were, um, all the Santana stuff prepares you for it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I would kind of jump in and out and play and play that, you know, play the licks here and there. And because it was just you on guitar, or guitar. It was just, I was the only guitar player. Yeah. And we didn't, we didn't play the tracks or anything. It was just, you know, live and go. Um, but then, so, uh, yeah, so then that was a really cool experience. We ended up that song ain't angels. I can't remember. I think it's, I haven't listened to it or thought about it in, you know, almost 20 years. But the, 
I think it was Angels on that song. Uh, we we um we went in to record that at Ocean Studios. Uh huh. And in, in, in on in on Sunset in yep. Hollywood. Yep. And um we ended up we cut it live and we ended up doing about sixty or seventy takes. <laughs> and then kept the first one. Didn't change a fucking thing. Kept the first take and we did like sixty or seventy. It was like one o'clock in the morning and we're like Oh my God, man. And like the vibe was just like, you know, you play a song that many times, it's just like, you know, there's no vibe left. Yeah. And, um, and they, they ended up taking the very first take, which was, which was really funny. Um, but Robin was crazy like that. He was a, he's a, he's a crazy perfectionist and, you know, and, and, um, you know, he'll, he will beat it into the ground until it, until he gets, until he gets it right, you know, or if he has to circle back and go, oh, that's right. You know? yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, Rob is great, man. He's he's a really talented guy, and and, and um, it was it was fun. it was a fun experience. It was an unexpected experience as well, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and then from him, you then got the pink gig, and was that just because Robin wasn't touring anymore, or he decided to go a different direction? No, well, actually, we were still I was still playing with Robin, and the opportunity presented itself and i i i i really wanted to go play with pink you know i felt bad for ditch and robin and i told you know we, we we're still friends you know um i still see robin from time to time and and and, we're, and he's he's a great dude we're, we're still we're still cool but um and he 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 understood he took it really well but i i you know i just um you know, for one, I, I, I really love her, loved, loved her as an artist at the time, right? And, you know, I love her, like, you know, she's one of my best friends, you know, she's awesome. But at the time, I was a fan of her, you know, of her artistry. And um, so then, um, yeah, I just, I got the call to audition, I auditioned and, and I got the gig and I, I, I had to fly to DC to do a gig with Robin and I was like learning pink songs and soundtrack and, and he was getting annoyed. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so, um, yeah, so my rig, once I got the pink gig, that's when my rig really, and that, really changed. What year was that? That was 2006. That was 2006. Yeah. And that was actually like, um, Cause I had, I had my pedal board and you know, um, it was pretty much what I was talking about earlier. I might've had like a vibe pedal or something I've added, you know, there might've been a couple things I've added along the way. Um, and I also didn't know how to hook anything up. Everything was just plugged in the wrong order. Fucking I, you know, it's, it was just, you know, that sounds weird. That's fine. You know, it was like, um, but I learned eventually sort of um and so but my rig really changed in because the because the tech that was that was there tony he's like all right now we gotta get your pedal board together and he you know he had a pretty good idea of of you know what he was doing and and he took what i had and and you know he made like a junction box he just sort of neatened everything up and we put things in the right order and i think that's when i got the um what was it? The the the, uh, the the double the boss double pedal delay pedal. Um, not the DD five hundred, but the the twenty. The DD twenty. Yeah, that's right. So I got the DD twenty, um, and um, I had my Bogner foot switch, which had the you know the dirty the boost and the reverb, and I would use the verb on the Bogner. Um, and ran my delays in the loop and that was i had wah and i had one volume pedal at the time now i've got two i've got one in the loop and one in front mm -hmm. um i'm actually there's got to be there's um let me just pull this up um there's got be. i'll tell you exactly what i had on it there's got to be pictures of it online 
and this was in 2006, you said, when you got with Pink? Uh-huh. So that was right when I'm Not Dead came out. That was it. That was, that was, the, that was the record. Yep. It's funny, Andy Timmons has a guitar credit on that. Does he? He does. Which, which, was it Long Way to Happy that he played on? Or does it say? I didn't say, I'm looking here. So he's got a credit. Don Warner has a credit. Uh-huh. And Butch Walker has a credit for guitar. Yeah, because Butch did, Butch did a few songs with her on that. Um, Another guy named uh, Jeff Phillips. Uh-huh. Uh, and Hoffa's got a credit on there, too. Right. Because Hoffa was playing with her um, probably when she was doing that record. Yeah. Um, and then he went on to do the, that rock star stuff, which I guess did me a favor. It, it, it opened the, the, the door, you know, the window for me to, to get in there and, 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 and start playing with her. Um, wait, hang on one sec. All right, here it is. I got it. All right. Let's this, see is, it. This, is, this is my old pedal board. So I've got a wah. A volume pedal, Ernie Ball volume pedal. Can you, and then screen, can you screen share it? Um, yeah. Wait. Just go down to screen share, hit hit the button there, and then it'll ask you what window you want to share. So all your open windows will appear. It's. Do you see screen share option? Can you hear me? Now I can. But oh, okay. Sorry. So so it's every time I hit screen share screen. It mutes you. It says host disabled. Oh, here, here, here. Let me. Uh, let me. Uh, um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see if it lets you do it now. Host disabled. Not working? No. That's weird. Right. Maybe just text it to text me the link and I'll put it up. Uh do you want me to do it right now? Or yeah, sure. I'll put it up right now. You that way you can walk us through it. Um let's see. Is there a way to just Yeah, I'm just gonna take a picture of it. All right, because it's just easier. I thought there 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 was a way to just share it. All right. Um. Boom! You got it. Right. <laughs> so. So yeah, man. So I, I um, do you want me to go through it? Yeah, take take us through, and as soon as as soon as the text comes through, I'll throw it up on the screen. Okay. So I, I got the wah first, and then I've got the volume pedal, and then it looks like I'm going out of that into let's see, going out of that into a, a boss octave pedal into that looks like i ended up changing that pedal but that that chorus pedal right, there it is that right. chorus pedal looks like it's the um super chorus or whatever but i ended up i ended up changing that to the ce2 because i ended up Wait, buying or is this the one that friedman had made that's no this is the one my, my um my my tech tony put together okay so yeah i see it is that a Showbud volume pedal? No, it just has a piece of gaff tape, glow in the dark gaff tape on it. Um, but it's it's an Ernie ball, but it was the big ones, you know, the the big giant fuckers. Now I've got the little juniors. Yeah. Um, but funny enough, the my the pedal board itself that all those pedal boards are on is uh is I've got two identical rigs and I still use that that same same board but um that same size okay but so anyway so i got the yes yeah, so i got the octave pedal and i got the chorus pedal then a flange pedal um which i remember that's like specifically for that song trouble okay. um 
And that was the only time I used that. And then the delay, that's gonna go, that's going through the loop, which I imagine is hitting this junction box somehow yeah. that, that Tony made. And I think my Deja Vibe is actually in the loop as well. Right. Um, and which is kind of crazy, but it's it's kind of a cool, cool, a little over the top, but yeah, cool sound. And then there's the foot switch. Yeah, I see that. And then the next box is a custom box that I think Friedman made. It was for my it's for my piezo. So like I use the acoustic um, pick. Uh, I've got not on this guitar, but on my some of my Les Pauls, I've got the the Fishman Power Bridge. Yep. You know, it's got little the little pickups, and I just. I just had it wired so it just goes to a stereo jack. I use a stereo cable, TRS cable. And that little box right there, it's it just basically switches sides and and slams it over to this preamp, the that Fishman preamp, which goes direct to front of house and then that's 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 it for the piezo. Nice. And then that hush pedal that 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 the noise uh Rocktron. Yeah, the little Rocktron hush thing. Um that was put on there and i didn't always have that on or in line that was put on there as a band-aid because i was getting a seriously like crazy hum in some venue or some venues uh it just would depend and for whatever reason that thing just would eliminate it you know the little noise gate yeah but um but yeah the early days the early days you know and and so now um actually there's there's pictures in this uh other thing of my rack yeah, let me see if i can find one here just if you just type in justin derrico pedal board in google and then you go to images it's got um you'll see it here i'm gonna i'm gonna pull this uh i'm gonna pull this up here and you can you can instruct me as to which one is the the appropriate the appropriate i'm sure they've um okay well there, there's several so this this one over here with the two racks on the uh, that that's my that's my b-rig okay so this is still in existence that's still in existence that's my b-rig um although it's it's a, it's a little different um so if you go to actually you see the one with the tall rack this guy here um uh, yes okay Let's that's that's more current um i am gonna get this one blown up oh wait does that oh no that's got the this has okay got like a gold finger and then a shiva in there uh -huh. so right now I've got a Shiva and a Friedman in there. That's right. what I've got. So this, this, and, and some of the pedals have changed. If you want, I could turn the screen around and show you what I've got. Sure, whatever, whatever you're willing to do. Um, let's see, let me move this thing. This mic might be in the way. Here, give me one second. Sure. I mean, you got that Marshall Frigg. <laughs> All right, get my headphones back on. Sorry, YouTube. YouTubers, you guys can write nasty things in the comments about this. <laughs> All right, so I don't want to move this mic because I don't want to mess with the sound too much, but I, I think this is, this is acceptable. So that's it. And you see that Marshall on top is what you, you turned me on to that Marshall. Um, GMP. And so basically, uh, where did what's, that go? The, what's that other rack that's near that's above the deluxe reverb? Is are those two brown boxes in a rack unit? Yeah, it's um, it's called Amp RX, okay. and it's and it's basically um, like a power conditioner of some kind. Yes, and it's for basically it's for two bands. It's really awesome. It's um, it's um. <clears throat> Does it just allow you to? It allows it allows me to control the voltage because since there's a lot of MIDI going on in my rig, especially when touring, you might get to some venues and, and it's like 
the voltage is like 130 or 125, you know, this rig does not like being over 120. If, and I've got the little meter on, you know, the meter on those, but also the Furman, you know, and so when it gets a little over, when it gets like to 121, my rig will just shut down or it'll stop switching. Huh. No idea why. No, no idea. And it could be my switcher. I've got the Ampete switcher. It could just be, I don't know if it's my GCXs, the Voodoo. I, I, I don't, you know, you could probably figure that out. But so I kept having that problem. And, and no matter where I go. So eventually um, I got this thing and I can control it. I can, and, and it really, the rig sounds really good around like 113. Nice. And so I could just, I can, I can adjust it. I can make the, the voltage hotter or, 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 or less, but I've always got control of it over it. And then that, that enables me to not have my rig take a shit on me. Right. And then when you go to other countries, do you, do you, do you attenuate it down from 220 or do you use a step down transformer that's then coming into that? And then you're making the adjustments at the same voltages. Yeah, that's what uh, they, they have uh, the step downs. And then I've still got this thing. And I've also got another like Furman um, power conditioner thing that it's like, I don't know, it's really expensive. And it's, it's in a giant ass rack. And every, all this stuff gets plugged into that. So if that takes a shit, then this stuff's safe. So I don't know what the hell it is. My tech was like, we need this. I was like, okay. <laughs> so... You know, I'm not the smartest guy when it comes to this stuff. I do love it, but um, I'm totally into my gear and stuff. But I'm, 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 some of it doesn't make any sense to me. But so you see, I've got the switcher, and I've, right now I've got the uh, since I'm at home, I've got the deluxe going, yeah, and I, and I've got the Marshall going. Sometimes I, I I'll pop in that Telos, which is really awesome. Yeah. That Bogner, it's such a cool head, and then. Um, there's the original Shiva that, that, that's the one I use. And then that's the 79 Marshall and then the, the, the brown eye. Then you got your J45. Yep. Yep. That, that guitar is awesome. I have the exact same guitar. <laughs> same. I, I love that guitar, man. It records so nicely, man. It's so awesome. Nice. Yeah. So, so what are, what are some of, if, if we were to go sort of kind of pedal, genre by pedal genre would you be willing to give us some of your top picks and some of your favorites in those categories sure yeah absolutely so let's start with uh let's start at, at, at kind of the beginning of the chain favorite wah pedals Just say that you kind of broke up favorite wah pedals favorite wah pedals well right now i use the clyde mccoy the dunlop Okay. McCoy and, and that I, I sort of did a shootout with a bunch of the Dunlop pedals and that was my favorite one out of, out of that. I still love the Vox stuff. The Vox wah pedals are to me are awesome and I really like the Buddha Waz. Purple one. Yeah, the purple one. Man, those were cool. I, it's such a cool squawk to it. I got one right here, the Buddha Waz. Yeah. 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 Um, I had one years ago and then it broke and then I just never replaced it and, and, and I, I think you know, out of just sheer necessity and, and being on the road, if something takes a shit, I can always easily get that Dunlop pedal. You yeah. know, now it's different. Now you got Amazon and this and that. You can get pretty much anything. But um, before when you actually had to go to Guitar Center or, or the music shop, they would more than likely have something. Like if there's a Guitar Center, they, they definitely have that, you know. Um, but that... I think the boot is probably my favorite sounding one, to be honest. The the Clyde is frigging awesome, which is basically a box, which I love. But I think the boot is my my guy. Got to go to go to Reverb and get yourself a, a boot. I need to, yeah. Now you're kind of like making me go fuck. I need to go get myself a boot a while again. <laughs> Paul Jackson Jr. right now still uses those. He's still really into them. They they got a following. Yeah. Yeah. What about for um, compressor pedals? What are your favorites? Well, I love yours, by the way, and not just to, um, you know, uh, not because you're here, not to kiss your ass, but it's really, it's a really great pedal. Um, 
And I have been using the Wampler as well, the, the Ego. I've, I've used that for years and um, it's a little, it's, a, it's really good. It's a little noisy at some times, I've noticed. Um, but it's, it's, um, it's a cool pedal. Um, but I would say, I, I'm actually leaning towards yours these days. Um, and also, but that's also because it's also got that, that, that preamp feature where you could just yeah. goose it and, and, and you get that sort of Jimmy Page thing, that, that black dog kind of thing. And it's, and it's kind of a different thing, you yeah. know? So, so it's like two pedals in one, you know, and the compression also, on it's awesome, you know? Yeah, I'm glad you dig it. As, as I tell people that compliment us, the, the check is in the mail. So, <laughs> what, what about uh, overdrives? What are your favorite overdrives these days? I mean, I know you get a lot of your gain from the amp, but mm -hmm. when you do use an overdrive, what do you like these days? The OD3 is sort of my, my, my go-to, um, like on the lower side of things. Um, you know, and then the steel string, to me, like, I, the steel string is more of like, I mean, it's an overdrive pedal, right? It, but it's, it's, it's more, I don't use it that way. It's like less gain. It's more of almost kind of a little bit of a boost, yeah. kind of just a little bit of a color thing, you know, where I'm using the OD3 more as like, um, you know, like a like proper drive pedal, but it's, it's, it's just cool. It's bright and it's, you know, it sits in the mix so nice and it, and it just, any guitar I plug into it just it just sounds good, you know. Yeah, and they're not expensive to get the OD threes. It's like yeah, they're like they're like a hundred bucks or something. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. mean, I think I might have even gotten that one for like forty bucks or some shit. <laughs> what about like higher gain distortion pedals? Do you use those very much, or at that point, do you just feel like the amp is kind of doing that job? I feel like the amp to me uh, is doing that. I haven't had a ton of luck with some of the higher gain stuff. Um, the Bogner ecstasy pedal, the red pedal and the blue pedal, they're really awesome. And actually all his overdrive pedals I, I really like, but I still, to me, they don't beat the amp. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I, and, I, and I really struggle with that because, you know, sometimes I find like I say the amp doesn't have a ton of gain. I'll, uh, if I can drive the amp and I could find something even like a tube screamer or, or, you know, actually the Schaefer replica is, I love, I've actually, that's one I use to kind of sometimes instead of like a, a tube screamer, I'll use that, you know, just with a little bit of gain, a little bit more level, just to kind of give it that extra push over the edge. And it just, it is awesome. You know? Yeah. Yeah, those are cool. What, yeah. <laughs> what about for boot? You still there? Say, say again. Yeah, I think, I think. You there, Mason? Can I'm here. I'm here. All right. All right. I got you. What about um, for boots? For boost? Your pedal by far, <laughs> without it, without a, a, a doubt, dude. I've actually got them hooked up right now. I've got one of them hooked up right now on my board, mm -hmm. right? Nice. Now I've got two of them, only ones that hooked up right now because I, I need to get that. There's, I want to actually, I, I should probably have you either come over or come or come to you, bring this stuff. It'd be easier if you came, if, you know, next time you're in town, if you came over. Yeah. This yeah, I'll put on my hazmat suit. And... <laughs> um, yeah, what I, well, when shit, you know, whenever the whole thing blows over and you can. But figure out how to wire these in, because I wanted to do the thing you were talking about with hooking them up to the volume pedal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, with, the, with the little split thing, you know, and uh, the split cable that you were talking about. So I wanted to do that. Um, with both of them because I got one pedal in the loop and one in the front. Yeah, so yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna do it for. Would it be weird to do it in the loop as well? No, it'd be cool because you could have one. It's if if one's in the front, then you could use one to add more gain to stuff. You know. Cause yeah. You add more, and then the other one's just gonna be like a boost walk back to your amp, and you turned up the volume control. You know. Yeah. Right. Right. But you can do that remotely on the pedal as well, which is cool. 
And when you turn off the boost, it's just going to make your volume pedal act like it normally would act, you know, right. Your volume pedal, except it's an expression at that point. So right. And so the volume pedal, like it no longer matters. Like you could throw any Ernie ball volume pedal you want in there. It wouldn't have to be the 25 K one. Sure. Yeah. It's yes. Really just an expression pedal at that point. That's doing volume. And when the boost is on, it's expressing silent in the, in the heel position to whatever the amount of boosted level you've put. So it's like a, it's like a volume pedal that you can increase the volume up to whatever the threshold is you've set on the boost when it's okay. On. Then you kick it off and the volume pedal is working. <clears throat> Yeah, so that's what I want to do. Um, Cause I thought about, um, you know, I thought about, oh, I'll just toss them in the rack. Yeah. But then I was like, man, I want to. I mean, which I could do. I just have to run a long ass cable, but I don't need to do all that. It would take Ten minutes to put the insert cables for that. It'd be really fast. Yeah, yeah, and so, um, so yeah, that's what I want to do. Uh, but right now, I've got it hooked up, so it's just in in the front um and uh and dude I, I i i i used it literally um on almost everything i did actually i used that with my bogner um for a lot of the jam track stuff that i just did a, a master class with uh, jtcguitar.com or whatever and i used the that boost pedal and also did a collaboration solo um with them and I used the boost pedal with my Marshall. Nice. Uh, so I think it was my Marshall, the boost, and the uh, Schaefer yeah. for that, and some delay in the box. You know, um, lately I've been using Sound Toys. Have you messed with them? Yeah, yeah, they're great. Oh, it's, I love it. So, memory, what's the Memory Man one called? The Memory Boy or, something, or the? Oh, the Echo, the Echo Boy Junior. Echo Boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I have to figure out how to make my delays sound as good as that somehow. Now, now that I've been home recording, those are the only delays I've been using. And, I, and, and so now I'm like, fuck, man, I got to get them to sound that good. <laughs> yeah. And I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> well, I mean, that's, that's kind of like, you know, what happens with the wet, dry, wet, you know, when you bring in stuff in Pro Tools, you're mixing in the wet acoustically with the dry tone, you know? Mm -hmm. There's kind of a different property to it when you're doing it that way. Maybe you need to get yourself some old uh, PCM 42s. And I know, man. I do actually. I've actually got a, a SDE 3000 in my rig. Oh yeah, those are cool. It's just awesome. The only thing that I don't like about it is I can't tap the you know tap the tempo unless you can do a mod or something for me. Yeah, I mean that stuff. You don't want to start going down that route. It's it's tricky, you know. Yeah, I, I tried and and it, and it didn't work. Yeah. Um, like because it was weird. It was like it, like if I tapped it twice, it would mess with the memory on it, and the, or it would switch the patch. Yeah, and then and then then it would work, but it wouldn't really work. It was kind of a you know. So that one's a good though. It's a great delay if you could you know for recording especially. It's like or if you just got you know sort of set it for one thing. You know, or if you know what the settings are, you could program it, but it's, you know, that's way more work than I want to do. I'm, I'm using right now, um, and some of the stuff, you know, because I have to, we can't shoot at the at the showroom anymore. And mm -hmm. I have one of those Boss Wazacraft um, tube amp expanders. Have you seen those things? No. Basically like a, a reactive load box. You can add your own IRs to it if you want or load your own IRs to it. Uh -huh. But it's it's an analog reactive load, and then it's and then it has an IR you know thing that you can do after the fact. Oh wow! Uh, one of the cool things about it is it also you can put it has it some some uh, delays and reverbs already built into the box. And oh it nice! SD, uh, or it has the SDE three thousand in it or a model of it. Oh and wow! That in post to whatever's going into it, and you can even get if you're hooking up to an actual speaker cabinet. It will put it, you know, between the, I'm that, assuming after the output transformer go, before it hits the speaker. So you don't have to put it in a loop. You don't. It, and it has an effects loop built in too. So if you have an amp that doesn't have an effects loop, you can put it into the loop of this and it will, you know. Act, ah, act. so that'd be good for my Marshall then. It'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it sounds pretty good. I've been loading like the Ohm Hammer or the Ohm Hammer um, IRs into it and using those instead of the ones that are built in. 
and uh, and using I'm using my outboard rack here, the Lexicon stuff. But even if I just use what's in there, it sounds actually pretty good. I, the SDE one was pretty good. Shit, man, I got to get one. So so then I can hook. Because I was trying to figure out, like I have. So for home, I, the Marshall's amazing at home because I can. I can, I can, you know, do all the stuff in the box with the delays and stuff, but when I'm, you know, on the voice or whatever, I can't really, unless I'm running it clean, I, there's, you know, all the, you know, all the delays are, are going to have to be in front of the amp and others, cause there's no effects loop. So I, I was trying to figure out how do I incorporate that into the rig and get the delays out of it, but use the amp at the high gain that I like to use it at, you know? Right. So, so maybe that's the answer then. It's one, it's one option. I mean, you can also do, you know, take a line out box out of it and then that could feed your, your wet stuff in your rack, you know, and then you would just have to go into a, return it into a power amp or something like that. Yeah. But then I think it, it gets a little out of hand because then it's like, the I, system you have is mono, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, I think it would be the easiest way to, to do that. It would be. Yeah. Cause I did, I did, I took your, your advice and I, I did the wet, dry, wet thing and it was, it was amazing. And I used my, um, my Digitech, uh, hardwire yeah, delay yeah. pedal, which is, I love that. That's a great pedal. Yeah. And I can uh, that for you to go hundred percent wet too. If you want to get the full, where only wet's coming out of the cabinet. There's no dry signal at all. Right. So I hooked that up and I had two, tw I had the, you know, one, t uh, two, 12, two single 12 cabinets yeah. and I was going wet, dry, wet and dry, not wet, dry, wet, but just wet and dry. And it's, dude, it was like, this is amazing. But, yeah. th but then, you know, problem for me, it's like when I'm doing it live, you want then, I'm rely then I'm relying on the front of house guy and, you know, to mix in my effects, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a cool way that you can do it with some of the rack stuff when it's using XLs um, because you can just have it feed your in-ears or you can, you can, you can use these uh, cabinet simulators for the, for the wet side that uh, would just go XLR directly into the board. And then, you know, they could give you an in-ear mix that would reflect sort of the amount of wetness that you'd want against the dry. Mm-hmm. And and it's pretty it's pretty cool. Like there's one company that that I think does a really cool version of it, where you don't need to go into a power amp. Uh, that's called the the Cab Zeus. Okay. And they have a stereo one, so you could still do all whatever processing you wanted in in front of the amplifier. You take the line out from the say the Marshall. You go into the the delay and in, in you know in reverb stuff or whatever you have in the loop. And then that would go into this stuff unbalanced. And then it has a balanced output, two balanced outputs from that that can go directly into your board or into your DAW or whatever. So you don't need to haul around more cabinets. You don't need to haul around more power amps. It's literally going the wet signal directly into your mixer or directly, you know, and then there into your in-ears or whatever it is. So certainly- and Does that does that get complicated where, so then I have to almost do that for all amps. Because when I'm using multiple amps, does that get complicated when it's kind of sort of switching the system a little bit? If you were if you were going to do it, you know, with all of them, it, it would be it would be trickier. But if you were just saying to use your 50 watt Marshall that doesn't have an effects loop, it, it would be a way to sort of get the wet stuff in there and not have to modify it. Right. Okay. So, or yeah, you could use the Waza, and then it's got its it's got its own effects. To loop. me, like that is the most appealing. Because it just sounds like I could plug that thing in and it'll work. Yeah, you can, and I, and I think there's a there's a control in the back where you can go like minus ten or plus four. You know, uh -huh. do most of you know the semi pro or pro audio levels if you needed to. Okay. Um, Is the, which, what's the name of that pedal again? We text it to me when when we, yeah. when we finish up. Well, I'll sh I'll show you it in my rack when we're done. You can kind of see see it. Um, but it's called the Tube Amp Expander. Okay. Two amp expander. I'm gonna get one. Send it to you. Um, so we talked about boost. What about your favorite modulation stuff? What are some of your favorites these days? Well, um, the the Wazacraft CE2 is awesome. Yep. I have an original CE2. I have several original CE2s, which I love. Um, which are in. I actually have both. I've got 
the original CE2 in my rig, which is in the effects loop, and then I have the Wazacraft, which is in the, is in the front of the amp. Yep. Um, and then there's also the other one, it's, it's in my other rig right now, it's escaping um, the Dimension C, mm -hmm. Wazacraft. Mm -hmm. Favorite chorus pedal, done. Like it sounds so good. Like it's it sounds, it sounds exactly what I want a chorus pedal to sound like. Um, and it's got just it doesn't. There's no knobs. It's got four. Was it three or four switches? Switch buttons. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I use the third one. Third or four, I use whatever's on the end. Um, and and it just dude, it's just. Uh, and there's a. I think there's a dip switch. It's been a while. It's been a few months because it's in my other rig. I don't have to, I need to get another, another one, but, um, yeah, dude, that it's, it's one of those pedals. Every time I plug into it with some reverbs and delays and that going on, dude, it's like, I just get inspired and it's, uh, it's some really neat stuff comes out and it's, it's, you know, um, so that's really cool. Um, and one thing that's been, uh super useful um is the h9 that's been a great pedal as well um because it's just got tons of shit in it and most of the stuff sounds really good most of the stuff's really usable and um you know so that's that's been that's been a go-to for a long time actually yeah what about um anything for uh vibe like or phaser or do you use the h9 for that uh no actually i don't that's the one thing you know the choruses and the the, the flanging stuff i don't the the thing i use the h9 the most for will be some of the like um shimmer verbs and and sort of the spacey weird shit that's in there that you could just go oh what's this and you hit a note it goes <laughs> or, or you know or the harmonizer thing you know um but for flange stuff um i don't have um, oh wait, I do. I've got the the boss flanger in here, which which is okay. Um, I haven't really gone down the 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 road of of flange um, in depth. I remember when I was younger in the '90s, they had the the the, the boss flanger pedal, whichever was the the newest one then. It only had like two or three knobs on it. I remember that one being awesome. Yeah. Um, but for phasers, I just I got the 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 uh, EVH uh, phase 90, which is, yeah, it's awesome, you know, um, but I don't use a ton of phasing and flanging stuff. It's only if I, if, if it's like, um, I don't typically gravitate towards that. Like I'll use it for, if it's, if it's, if the song has it on there, you know, you know, if it's like an Isley brothers track, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you need to have some gain and put do some who's that lady or something like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about what about for Univibe? Do you use any Univibe anymore? I saw the old Deja Vibe on one of your old rigs. I still have this that Deja Vibe in my rig. Yeah. Cause I use that. Um that again, that's another pedal I'm not I, I don't um I'm not always hitting, but um it is because it's so specific. Yeah. But, you know, that's something um, that I use on, on the Pink Show uh, um, for that song, Just Like a Pill. I use that in my chorus pedal. And it's, you know, um, and yeah, but that's that's been my favorite one. Um, they used to have the Jimi Hendrix Dunlop oh, yeah. Univibes. I thought those were, I had one when I, was, when I was younger, man. That was cool. I thought they sounded great. Um, I have never a bead one because it's been so many years since I've even seen one of those. But, um, but the Deja vibe is pretty great, you know. What about for a delay? What do you like? So I love the DD five hundred, um, you know, because it does have like the SDs in it and stuff, and and it's got a you can it's got a wide range of stuff that it does. You yeah, it sounds great. And it sounds great. Um, it. I also really like the Strymon Dig. I think is a really cool delay, uh, and I and um, um, and that the the Digitech Hardwire is is yeah, awesome. The, the it's a really cool pedal. Yeah. What about for reverb? Reverb, I like the Hall of Fame. I think it's really cool, and I I like the Strymon um, Flint, which actually has the 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 tremolo. Yeah. Um, which is really cool. Nice.
Mm-hmm. Any, any sleeper pieces of gear that you feel like people are not hip to that, you, that you really like using? That's like new? It'd be or new, or new or old. Not that you couldn't, you know, like the Buddha wall was an example, I think, of one sleeper that you talked about in, in, in our chat today. Any other ones that you feel like are like under the radar, people don't really know about them, they, or they don't get the respect they deserve? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I would say, like, maybe, do people know a lot about the Digitech hardwire? Because they don't make them anymore, right? They don't, no. I've been trying to spread the word, but people don't know about them. And do they, are they still making them or are they stopped? No, they stopped maybe maybe five years ago, maybe a little bit more, because they got bought by uh, Samsung. Uh-huh. Harman got bought by Samsung. And so I think that they just are selling off what they have left. I don't think that they are, they don't produce the pedals anymore. So that's a shame. You get the DLA. I mean, the way I, I got hip to it was because I saw Steve Lukather had them mm-hmm. on you know, and, uh, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I wish to try these things out. I remember at the time they were, even they weren't even that much money new. I no, no, I got several of them because I, like, I played one and I was like, I think Dave Friedman turned me on to him and I played one and I was like, oh, shit, this is awesome. Um, so I got a couple of them, but then they stopped making them. So um, that kind of sucks. But um, I've actually got a tiny little, I got to show you this. Cause just because it's so cool. Hang on. All right, this will actually bring me to a, 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 pe- a sleeper gear, a piece of sleeper gear that I think is really fucking radical. So anyways, so I, I had to do a fly date with Pink and it was like a, like a little yeah. TV number, and so I built this little board. Okay. And it's really cool because I can have everything running in front, or if I want to get like fancy, I can, you know, take this whole side and, and put it in my loop, and this could be the front, you know, and I could kind of, it's super simple. This is an awesome pedal. All these are great pedals, right? Yep. This is the, the what we're talking about, right? The hardwire. It's missing a knob or the cover, whatever. Um, but this. Power supply <laughs> is fucking awesome because you charge it and let's see if it turns on. I haven't used it in forever and I haven't charged it in forever. So it looks like it's completely dead. But there were times where I hadn't touched this thing for a long time and it cranked right up and had full battery power. But this thing lasts for a long ass time and, and you don't have to plug it in. You just get a USB. Do you have any noise issues? No, I've had, I, I haven't, nothing that I've noticed. Okay. Um, but you should check it out because you might go, oh, it kind of does this or does that because you're usually quicker to pick up on those things than I am. That most people have on it is that, you know, there's a convenience aspect, but a lot of people have, have experienced some noise issues. And then some of them, I don't know if they've changed them, but I remember early on, like it would melt, you know, they get too hot. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. But I think, I mean, you know, this is this is not what the general. You know, this is what you think is best. I'm not here to to police. So, <laughs> so I would say, for me, in the application of what this was for, say I'm going to do a gig in town with my buddies, yeah. or you know, or you know, I can't bring that rack, um, and or like I'm flying to London. And I got to go do like a TV spot or something like that, where it's only going to be on for maybe an hour, you know, not, or it's really going to only be used for like four minutes. But um, to me, like, I, it was just something I found. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. I don't even need to plug shit in. I don't even need power. I'm in, bro. You know? <laughs> yeah. I dig it. Oh, I'll tell you one thing. The other thing. Sorry. I know I keep just doing this to you. Oh, but, oh, let's do it. Um, it keeps popping up, but the um, the Chandler tube driver. Oh yeah, I love this pedal, and I'm sure people know about it because it's like the Eric Johnson and the, you know da 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 da. But this pedal is so freaking cool, especially in front of that Marshall. It's amazing. Have you messed with the MXR uh, FET driver version of it, where it's it's like just nine volt power, just like a regular MXR size? No, but I do have a 
I think Love Pedals made it, and it's the oh, the, the oh, Dover yeah. Drive, which is that one's really good too. But not uh, as, not as good as the OG. Yeah, I you know maybe it's psychological because this is you know what I mean. But I, I don't know, like there, it's pretty it's pretty damn close to be honest. But see if you can tell. Huh? You blindfold you next time. Well, yeah, yeah, that's, that's actually really good. That's a good call. Um, <laughs> we'll do that. We should do a blindfold shootout with some shit. Yeah, it'd be funny. Because I'd love to call myself out on some bullshit. But you know what I mean? Because like some 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 shit really is okay. psychological. Put you know, on in your hands and see if you can tell the difference between that and your your Les Paul. Who'd you say that again? We'll get an Epiphone and put it in your hands instead. Uh. <laughs> So. yeah totally dude i mean the, the, it's funny because there are some sometimes you'll pick up an epiphone and go like those master built acoustics those epiphone master belts yeah they're killer yeah and it's like holy shit man this thing's better than my actual <laughs> gibson <laughs> you know but yeah i know that would be it would be a an interesting shootout man yeah yeah well justin this has been really cool i really appreciate you sort of like taking us through the years of kind of how your your career has progressed the the behind the scenes of kind of how the voice has run and how it's running now your gear the gear picks the sleepers it's it this is all really fun information and i really you know you, you told me a lot of stuff i actually didn't know you know about about you and your. wait a minute i told you stuff you didn't know no it wasn't about gear <laughs> Well, I think I think you, you had some some good pieces of advice too. I mean, I think I I, didn't, I don't I've been thinking about the Buddha wall lately, and I think that that's a really good pick. And I also think, you know, that one of the your big overdrive pedals is the OD three. You know, in and of itself, that's a sleeper pedal. I have one over on the shelf here. Yeah, and I think that you know you don't have to have a eight hundred dollar boutique overdrive to get good tones out of it. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, like, you know, um, I know you're wrapping up, but I think for me, like, I tend to go for the things that are very transparent, sort of, like your pedals are that way. They don't really change anything and they're reactive, you know, like if you press harder, you hit it harder. Like, I like things to respond to my, to me, to my hands, yeah. um, to, to the dynamics and things. And that's, that's the great shit to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, you, certainly nobody can question the the tones that you get because they're just they're they're incredible. And oh, thanks, man. People want to learn more about <clears throat> you, or they want to uh, go and experience uh, your lesson packages that you have. Where, where do people? Where can people go and find that? Yeah, um, you could go to jtcguitar.com, and I've got the latest masterclass I did. It's like a uh, it's called Rock Triad Wikipedia, and it's basically I took. Um, just all the triads out of um, uh, out of different harmonies like melodic minor, harmonic minor, and diminished and, and uh, mixolydian, uh, like sort of modal stuff, and um, it's just really cool, colorful stuff to play over, you know, over static chords and things like that. So, but I also have a bunch of other um, lesson packages at JTC as well. You know, a bunch of rock lick. Uh, packages and uh, all sorts of other random stuff that I've done over the years. Yeah, I mean, um, and they're they're great. I've I've I, I I can't say that I've purchased one of them because I, I I'm 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 not a an, an expert guitar player. <laughs> but I, I see them when you post the the clips on Instagram, and I always watch those through. And I'm just like, man, you know, the, the tones are are incredible, and and it's clear that you know there's been a lot of of time and production value that's put into them to make it you know synthesize it as best as possible for a, a person that, that is that is you know looking to improve their skills on the guitar i certainly think that it's a it would be a great move to check out what justin's putting out yeah yeah thanks man no it's great the jt stuff jtc stuff is great because you get you know the the solo and you get all the licks and you get them fast and slow and then you get all the pdf files of all the stuff and then and also explanations of the theory behind it so it's it's real informative stuff so um but yeah, man. Thank you so much, Mason. This was so much fun, man. I, I love just picking your brain and, and talking shit about this stuff because you know so much about it, and you know it's 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 fun to get your perspective on on things. I, I always enjoy our conversation, <clears throat> and, I, and I look forward to uh, us us getting together soon and and uh, heading over to 
salsa and beer there. Oh, yeah. I fucking miss that place. That place was so <laughs> badass. It's some Mexican food. Yeah, man. It's funny. You took me there. And um, then afterwards, I was like, oh, man, you guys got to go here. And they're like, oh, salsa and beer. Yeah, I know that place. <laughs> like, wait, you, hey, you guys got to go here. Oh, yeah, we know. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck, man? <laughs> yeah. I only knew about it because uh, my wife's uncle like lives like right behind it uh -huh. and uh, off of uh, Sherman. And, and so, you know, they're, they had taken me there, I don't know, maybe eight years ago or something like that. So when it, it's so good though. It is so good. It's great. It is great. Well, Justin, I really appreciate it again. You uh, making the time to talk to me today, giving us the inside scoop. And I really look forward to uh, seeing you in person uh, once, uh, when some of these curfews and all this stuff are lifted, uh, yeah, to engage with real people. Likewise, man. Thank you so much, Mason. All right. See you later. All right, buddy. Peace.